Chapter 6 As Lulu walked down the street to her second appointment, she started singing this money song, which all of a sudden had popped into her head. Jimmy, Johnny, Joseph, Jake, how much money will I make? Lori, Lucy, Lynn, Laverne, how much money will I earn? Money, 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 money. By the time she had sung her song a few times, she had come to the next house where the doorbell was answered by someone who introduced herself to Lulu as Pookie's mommy. She wasn't a dog, of course. She was a plump, pink human being with many curls. Did you really think that a dog had answered the doorbell, opened the door, and introduced herself? A teeny tiny white fuzzball was nestled cozily against Pookie's mommy's chest and held in place by Pookie's mommy's left hand, as Pookie's mommy explained. Hang in there, please. The sentence is long. That though her little girl's name was spelled P-O-O-K-I-E, the pook part rhymed with duke and not with book, and that Pookie got very upset if she was called by a name that rhymed with the wrong word. You'll never have a problem if you just remember duke, said Pookie's mommy, or puke, Lulu secretly thought, but did not say. Otherwise, you're sure to hurt her feelings, and trust me, you don't want to hurt Pookie's feelings. Lulu soon learned that the other thing that was sure to hurt Pookie's feelings was expecting Lulu Pookie to walk when Lulu walked her. Here's how this works, Pookie's mommy explained. You're the one who walks. Pookie gets carried, and when it's time, you'll sit her gently underneath a tree, and she will do what she's supposed to do. How will I know when it's time? Lulu asked, and Pookie's mommy answered, Not to worry, she will let you know. During this whole conversation, Pookie never opened her eyes, not even when she was handed over to Lulu, who was urged by Pookie's mommy to practice saying Pookie's name several times. Nicely done, said Pookie's mommy to Lulu after she's, she'd finished practicing her ooks. I am offering you the job of Pookie's dog walker. Lulu didn't think much of a dog that couldn't even be bothered to open her eyes, but she very much liked the $12.50 that she would be paid every week to walk her. Remembering as she did now and then the manner she had learned from Mr. B, Lulu said to Pookie's mommy, Thank you, I accept. I'll see you at 6.32 on Monday morning. Chapter 7 The third house Lulu stopped at was a haunted-looking house, its yard overgrown with half-dead bushes and weeds and all kinds of wrapped and rusted and ratty old furniture, pots, bikes, toys, and other junk piled helter-skelter on its sagging front porch. The skinny man and woman who answered the door in matching warm-up suits and baseball caps greeted Lulu warmly. Then they started poking around in the mess on the porch with Mr. explaining, our dog is in here somewhere. And Mrs. explaining, Cordelia loves to hide. Since Mr. and Mrs. seemed to be having trouble finding Cordelia, Lulu joined in the hunt for the hidden dog, whose tail or ear or eye or leg would make a brief appearance and once again vanish. Finally, Lulu, desperately trying to grab some part of Cordelia, instead knocked a broken down bike off the top of the pile, which was followed by an avalanche of water-soaked books, chipped dishes, several window screens with holes, and one yapping dog. Lulu covered her head with her hand to keep it from being bopped by a falling screen. With the other hand, she reached out for Cordelia. Gotcha, said Lulu. Good job, said Mr. and Mrs., who patted her shoulder and told her she was hired. And Lulu, handing them back their dog, said to Mr. and Mrs., I'll see you Monday morning at 6.34.